No sound. Thank you, Julie. Um, <clears throat> I did was welcoming Eileen Sack, who's coming to us from Southern Virginia, and um, hoping that she's not getting too much horrible weather over there. It's been unsettled. Um, so backtrack, since you guys didn't hear everything I was saying there at the beginning, because I forgot to unmute myself. It happens. Um, I have what I think is a really great um, demo for you today. I'm just going to, um, I've gotten a little bit more fancy with my streaming and um, managed to figure out how to use my um, phone as a second camera and bring it into the meeting so that I could actually show both views at once. So, um, <clears throat> so let's see if we can figure out how to make this work. There, that's good. So the, um, the demo that I'm doing today is a project that is brand new with our, um, and Patty's saying no sound still, but maybe that's an older comment. You guys, somebody pipe in and tell me, oh, Julie says she can hear me. Yay. So we should be good. Um, so this project is an upcycled belt. So I keep getting people asking me, oh, where'd you get the leather? It was an old belt. It was literally an old belt that we found at a thrift store um, some time ago. It's been in a drawer here in my um, office for forever. And when we started working on these new scroll work crimp ends, they were this belt. I, that's perfect. I'm not. I'm going to use that. I'm going to put some color on it, and I'm going to use it with the new scroll work crimp ends. So. Um, I have been telling people, um, yeah, you have to look in thrift stores. You have to look in uh, your closet, maybe. Maybe your, uh, if you have a uh, husband or, or boyfriend, maybe his side of the closet. I don't know. Uh, yeah, might have to be sneaky. But no, don't do that. You can find them online. Just um, do a web search for um, tooled leather belts. And you should be able to find belts like this that have um tooling on them and i actually have another one here that i'm going to cut up for us for today um this one is i suspect this might be one that i wore when i was a kid i've had it around for so long i kind of forgot um but that's what i'm going to use to cut up for the project and also i'm going to demo you know you can get um leather blank leather cuffs um, Leather Cord USA makes these. You can find them at a lot of the um, jewelry supply places um, that are just blank leather cuffs and they have snaps. But I'm going to cut the snaps off because because um, I think that this will work just great with um, the crimp ends as well. Um, so we're going to demo that. We're going to use a couple of different coloring um, agents. So for um for painting on leather there's a few different things and um i'm gonna put a couple i'm gonna put a couple of links in here i when i was doing my research for um for figuring out okay what do i need to make sure people know what do i need to um you know i need to be informed before i go and demonstrate this thing um so I went looking online for just little tutorials about painting on leather. I found a couple of good ones. So I'm posting the links in the comments there. Um, one of the things that I learned right off the bat, hold on, I'm, I have to mess with my page of, my page of links that I prepared. Um, one of the things that they recommend is to always clean the leather and so they recommend i saw some recommended a one-to-one -one mixture of bleach and water i saw um one that recommended just rubbing alcohol so i cleaned all of the stuff that i was might be going to work on today with some rubbing alcohol this morning so they should be all prepped and ready to go um i have to admit that when i first did these bracelets i did not do that research so i didn't clean these but the paint is in the uh the tooling of the leather so it's kind of in there and it seems like it's um going to be fine it seems like it's going to wear fine one of the other things that they also recommend is that you seal if you're going to use a paint on the leather is that you seal it afterwards with an acrylic um clear um, acrylic sealer so i started to say what we're going to try is a few different um paint things when I first made this project, I used um, I used Gilder's paste, 
I used um, just some acrylic. I used some actual leather paint. I played with a, a brand called, it's by Jacquard, and it's called Lumiere, and it's actually a paint for leather. I have a couple of, um, well, actually, I'll just type that, and I didn't get links for that, but a couple of brands of acrylic paints that are made just for leather. Paint for leather. Um, there's this one that I've got right here, but made by Jacquard, and there's also a brand called Angelus. So when you're looking um, for um, paint for specifically made for leather, um, those are two brands to look for. And I suspect you'll also find like the acrylic sealers for that. Hello, Kimberly. Hi, Cosette. Cosette's coming up to us from Hawaii. She used to work for us and then she she flew across to Hawaii and we haven't seen her since. Um, but we miss her. So welcome, Cosette. And there's lots of other friends popping in too. And hello to everybody who won't be popping in live and will pop in and watch later. Hello to you too. Um, so I was talking about acrylic paint. So that said, there are um, there are brands of um, paint that are made specifically for leather. You can also just use acrylic paints. So I'm going to try, there's a new one called Ultimate Paint. I think Vintage puts this out. Um, and I haven't tried it on um, paint yet, but I'm going to because I would like to do that. And I have, you know, one of my favorite colors is this is a kind of a turquoisey blue. And so I'm trying to resist the temptation to just use stick with those colors. I need to do an, I need to branch out. Right. And not just stick with my favorite color all the time. I don't know. Um, so anyway, we're going to do this on the tooled leather, but then I'm also going to move on to um, the bracelet blanks. And with those, I'm thinking there might be a little more, um, a little more creativity to, to play with. So I'm going to try sponge painting on some of the um, cuffs, and I also brought some paint pens. I don't know. It's a lot of stuff to play with. I tend to get a little bit excited. Um, I tend to get a little bit excited when I'm doing crafty type of demos with paint and whatnot, because that's kind of, that's my background. So, uh, you know, if we, if we don't get started, though, I'll run out of time here. So the first thing I'm going to do is clear off our, our, uh, our bracelet our pretty display. I'm just going to clear that off and I'm going to bring out this belt and I'm going to cut um, a piece of it and I want it to be, I want it to be, it looks like it's a little discolored. Like I said, I think this is really quite, quite old and I did clean it, but it's got a little bit of something funky there, but I think, hold on, I have an idea. I could just cut a piece that's, um, you know, further up the belt, but um, I don't want to waste it either. So I'm just going to scrub that a little bit, see if that comes off. And then the, uh, the paint will cover that. So I'm going to go ahead and just use that section. I'm going to cut a piece that is, so depending on the closure that I, um, you know, something else I'm going to throw in here. I know it's up in the, um, it's up in the, uh, description of the video, but I'm going to throw it in here too. Um, the directions for the scroll work bracelet kind of gives you, uh, that's on the website, gives you all kinds of, um, you know, details. And there's different ways of finishing this. I used both, I used both a toggle class and I used a, um, a button and made a little suede loop. So you want to pay attention to um, to what you're going to use for your toggle. You want to pay attention to that and adjust the length of your leather accordingly. So, for example, <clears throat> we'll get around to cutting this leather eventually, I promise. So, for example, if I'm going to use the toggle here, I want to allow... Uh, and, you know, the size of your toggle matters as well. This is a fairly small one. It's our new Western. Um, I want to allow a little over an inch for that toggle, uh, including the jump rings, you know, the toggle assembly. That's almost an inch and a quarter. So if I want, for example, a seven and a half inch bracelet, then I need to cut my leather <coughs> six and a half, 
a little bit less, a little bit less than six and a half inches, right? So let's see. No, I might be wrong there. We're going for seven and a half. We're going to cut it at about six and a quarter. And I'm just going to going to use a craft knife. And I've just I threw a little piece of um, uh, cardboard onto my um, mat to use as a cutting surface. I do have a nice cutting mat, but it's humongous, and I didn't think it would be very um, easy to use uh, during our demo. And I do want these uh, these edges to be even, so I'm going to just line up my ruler and make sure that these edges are straight. And as always, I'll try to keep my eyes um, on the um, on the comments. Oh, hey! So if you're looking for these, um, speaking of comments, there's one from Abby Berta, who's a customer of ours, and she has a lovely store in Illinois. I have never been there in person, but I look forward to going someday. Um, and she is selling her store, the Bead Place, is selling uh, these. Um, scroll work crimp ends it's a pretty new uh, line not sure if she's got them on the shelves yet but she she ordered them and she will have them so that's a good retail source for you um <clears throat> and that distracted me so i don't even know what i was going to say um i think i'm going to demo the i think i'm going to demo the ultimate paint first so it's an acrylic paint, it's water-based. I haven't actually used it before, but I have used, um, Vintage had a previous paint product called, oh, what was it called? It was wonderful. And they just, it was called Patina Paints. They're Patina Paints. And they, um, it was discontinued for some reason. And this is their, um, this is their new product. It always has to be um, always has to be shaken well. I'm gonna get all the pigments mixed. I could have done this before, but you know, I was busy. I've got various paintbrushes and whatnot. I've got my whole can of paintbrushes at home, so I have plenty to choose from. But then the trick is the problem there is that you have to actually actually choose them and I know I said I was going to branch out and use a different color guys and here I am shaking the same color let's use the slime green instead uh, Cindy yeah I'm just cutting on a little piece of cardboard I have a lovely big cutting mat but it's too big for this work area I might have to get myself a small like little compact one um, there was just no way I was going to be able to put that thing on my work area with all this other stuff. So it's just a little piece of cardboard. I don't know. Let's see how this is. We can't shake forever. Let's put some in the in the palette. Oh, that's pretty. That's a very minty kind of green. All right. So again, the one I'm trying first is um, Ultimate Paint. So um, what's going to happen here? Because I am... Um, I'm going to be putting this, working this into the crevices, into the tooled areas of the leather. Um, I want to, um, I want to have something handy to wipe it off of the raised areas. So this is an experiment, you guys. We'll see how this goes. That I decided that brush was going to be too big. So let's just go for it. I've, I'm just going to start working it into, it's a little bit thinner than um, I expected, but I'm going to work it into the paint. I want to make sure I get it, it I mean, into the leather. I want to make sure I get it into the, um, into the low areas, and then I'm wiping it off because I'm wiping it off the surface because I want to keep that, <clears throat> I want to keep it off of the, um, higher areas. And I need to do that um, without delay. I don't want to give this time to dry. And I'll show you why in a minute. 
because I did that when I was first doing this project. So I have a kind of a, I'm not going to say it's failed. Um, it's just not what I was going for. Where the heck is that one? It's one that I just put the paint on all the way across and then I didn't wipe it off in time. And so it dried all the way across the whole thing. So it just, I couldn't get it, um, I couldn't get it wiped off of the, uh, the higher areas. So if I run across that, I set it here to show you guys, um, but I don't see it right now. So when I see it, I will show it to you. And I may even want to, I have a little, um, I have a little container of water here. I may even want to use a little bit of water if it looks like it's not coming off areas where I, that I want it to. And I have some Q-tips for the same reason. So you see, you don't want to give that, um, you don't want to give the leather any time to dry. I mean the paint, you want to wipe it off quickly so that so that it goes where you want it and doesn't dry in the areas you don't want it and this is pretty fast drying it's acrylic and it's pretty fast drying stuff I like this minty green I'm glad I made myself branch out a little bit um, it does take a lot of shaking patty I probably am not giving this as much shaking as um, it could use, but seems to be working okay. And again, don't, don't get distracted and leave it and forget to wipe it off. And another um, approach could be, you could go at this the other way and um, and I don't know if this particular product would work very well for that because it is quite thin. But a thicker product, a thicker acrylic paint, you might be able to really dry brush it over the surface, the high points of the leather, and leave it and avoid getting it into the cracks. You know what I'm saying? So it would be, it would be the upper areas would be kind of highlighted and the lower areas would still be dark. Just another... Another thing you could try. What I really wish I had done, I was having so many ideas yesterday when I was getting out all the product, all the paints and the various things to play with, is I was having all these ideas and I wish I'd had time to actually make some more finished samples to just show you guys some other products. But we'll just, we'll demo what we can. This is looking really nice. We'll demo what we can here. And um, if we go over an hour, oh, I don't know, maybe that's okay. I'm putting a little more paint in some of the areas that don't look quite as, um, as uh, not as much color in there as I would like. And again, the one I'm using right now is the um, Ultimate Paint from Vintage. And I like it. It's it's thin, but um, it's doing what I want it to do. It's getting in the, I'm using um, additional applications to get it a little more saturated when necessary. But other, otherwise, it's doing what I want it to do. Also, I'm getting some on the edge. If I was, I would probably try to be a little careful, more careful and not get it on the edge. I guess it depends on how picky you want to be. So another thing to think about, so we're using the crimp ends on this leather, right? Um, we have a variety of crimp ends. They come in different sizes. This one, the new one is our biggest. It has an opening that's, uh, I'm going to say that's probably at the top there. It's about four millimeters. The smaller one, this is our very first one called our palace. You see how tiny it is? 
So it's maybe a three millimeter opening. So you wanna pay attention to that when you're deciding this leather is three millimeters ish thick, this belt. So that's fitting this just fine. Um, when it comes time, I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself here, but when it comes time to crimp down on this, this leather, if I really crimp it firmly, it'll probably hold without adhesive. But if your material is uh, thinner, you definitely want to reinforce um, reinforce when you um, with a little bit of adhesive so that you make sure that the crimp ends are going to hold. All right, so I've got I've got my little paint. I'm pretty happy with it. I could play with it and play with it and play with it, but we don't have time for that. And I could even, if I wanted to, after I'm all done here, I could go and have the ends on and everything assembled. I could, um, I could go in and uh, add more paint if I wanted. Needed to get myself a pen. So now I've got my my treatment on my um, <clears throat> on my leather. What I want to do in the back here is I'm going to make just I'm going to measure about a quarter of an inch down from the um, end of the leather, and I do want to make sure that I'm that I'm uh, as even as possible. And I'm going to do that on the other side as well. Because what's going to happen here is I'm going to trim the uh, sides so that the end, the crimp end is, um, you know, a little bit narrower than the end of, than the width of this leather. And that's going to vary. You're going to get, you might find a bracelet that's much wider. You might find one that's narrower. And of course, you'll want to choose your, your crimp end to, you know, that for the one that best suits the width of your leather. So this uh, leather is about an inch and a quarter. And it's a little bit wider than the end. So what I'm going to do here is just, um, I'm going to leave this on. I have to remember what I said to do in my in my instructions. So I'm going to leave this on uh, and kind of center it. And then I can take my pen in the back and make a little mark at the edge of the crimp end so that I know where to cut to. And then I'm just going to take my, um, I'm using a um, metal ruler and my craft knife, and I'm just going to cut that corner off. Trying, you know, because I'm not cutting on an actual cutting mat and I'm cutting on the cardboard, I am trying to be a little bit careful. I don't go all the way through it. So let's see. Um, Joyce is saying she loves that real time paint shaking. <laughs> it kind of reassures her that she didn't makes her feel okay about how long she's shaken hers. All right, so you can see that I trimmed the uh, sides which I think just, see if I can get my light over that a little better, which I think just looks nicer with the, um, with the crimp end. You could have, I could have just left that a straight corner, a regular little corner, but, um, but um, I think that this just gives it a slightly more finished look. I did a pretty good job of lining it up and cutting it to the width of the, um, of the, uh, Crimp end. So now I'm using when it. I, I'm not. You guys may or may not have seen me demo um, uh, using our crimp ends before. So what we like to use is either parallel pliers or flat nose pliers um, like this for for crimping down 
the crimp ends. I'm going to use the parallels. Also, something to mention with the newest newest crimp ends, the scroll work crimp ends, is that they are two sided. Um, the the one side has the wonderful raised scroll work detail. It was very inspired by uh, traditional silver work. I'm using the gold one for this design, but um, maybe able to see it a little better on the silver one. And then, but Kirsten, our product development manager, she didn't want this whole piece to get too thick and bulky. So she chose to make the design on the reverse side, just an incised design. So that is also nice too. Um, and it's up to you which side you, you face forward on your design. So something to know about and pay attention to when you're, um, when you're creating your, your uh, bracelet. So I'm using the parallel pliers. What I love about parallel pliers is that they come down and even with even pressure all along instead of an angled pressure like the um, like the traditional pliers would. So it really um, you can get a better crimp. So I'm coming at it from the back that um, kind of will help it to crimp up here at the top, which is important. And then I can test it and it feels, it feels very secure. I could also come in and go at the sides a little bit too, just to make sure. And that's on there, that's not going anywhere. So now I can come in and do the, all those steps on the other side to, um, did I put all the marks on? I didn't put the little marks up here at the top of the, at the top of the leather for this side. So let's do that. Oh, thank you. I mean, I'm, we're getting compliments on these um, print ends and talking about the um, the detail. You know, that is that is just kind of what drives us. We've always just really wanted to make nice parts and Kirsten, bless her is you know she's a wizard and she has a beautiful artistic uh vision so she turns out some great stuff i see that um joyce trowbridge is with us joyce is another one of our customers she has a store used to be a brick and mortar um that's not too far from our shop it's uh, about an hour and a half away maybe um but help me, help me, Joyce, because because the name of your shop is not coming to me, not coming to me so easily. Um, just beat it. How could I forget that? Just beat it. It's an online store only now. But uh, so I'm curious, Joyce, if you guys are carrying the squirrel work crimp ends. That one needs a little cleanup, but right now I'm just gonna go ahead and crimp this on. These parallel pliers do take a little bit of hand strength. And remember that the altern an alternative here is just to crimp this, um, just to adjust the opening of the crimp and to whatever your material is and make so to make sure that it has a good fit and then just use glue. You can do that. You don't have to crimp this um, to hold it. That's completely an option. All right, so we're doing pretty good. We've got both ends on and we just need to put um, a little closure on. And for simplicity's sake, I'm going to just use the, um, the toggle. And I'm forgetting, well, I'm not forgetting, but it hasn't changed the way I'm operating at all, um, that I have, I'm on camera in this setup too, when I'm using both cameras like this. Um, I thought it would be fun to, you know, I've seen other people, other people live stream with, with both views, both themselves and their uh, workbench. So that's new. If I don't look up at it, um, I'm not ignoring you. I'm just not, not I'm not remembering you're there or I'm there, I guess, as the case is. All right, so I'm just using one oval jump ring for the toggle ring. 
and I'll use two for the toggle bar. Oh, so Joyce says just beat it. She did order these uh, new crimp ends, and so she'll have them. She'll have them ready to sell on her shop soon. That is nice. Love it when our customers um, pop in because um, anybody who's familiar with us knows that we're a wholesale company. So if you want to shop retail, you have to find one of our customers. So it's great when they pop into our lives so they can say, here we are. All right, so example number one. I like it. This is a, a, a fairly stiff, thick bracelet. <clears throat> so it probably will need a little bit of working to soften it up, um, you know, to make it so that it's a nice bracelet shape. It's just a little bit stiff, but I like it. So that's, it's not a um, difficult process. You just uh, get out some coloring stuff. We know now that the um, that the ultimate paint works very nicely. Um, I would also like to demo the um, the new mirror, although I did do a little tester on that, so maybe I'll just do a little tester. I had some leather sheet, <clears throat> you know, but it's not tooled quite as deep. Nope, we'll go for the belt. Let me cut another piece. What did I do with it? Here it is. Maybe at, at the very least, I'll just demo it right down here at the bottom. Maybe we won't go, go through a whole bracelet um, project again because, you know, it takes time. And I have a couple other things I want to show you guys. So shake, shake, shake. What I need today is an assistant who's over here just shaking, shaking paint for me. Exactly, Lynn. She's going to go through her husband's closet and steal some old belts. Do you think, and Abby's asking, she says, do you think punching a hole at the end of the leather would make the adhesive hold a bit stronger? That's an interesting idea. Um, it's an interesting idea. I don't know if it's necessary, though, Abby. I mean, if this just crimped feels pretty darn secure, and again, um, how you use these, you're really going to want, want to pay attention to how thick your leather is. Um, if I put a little bit of adhesive under there too, I just can't imagine it would come off. Now, um, if you're using, and again, I'm jumping ahead, I've got some other uh, jewelry projects sitting next to me that um, I want to show you guys with that we've made using our other crimp ends. So um, what I was going to say is that um, depending on what you're using this crimp in on, you may only want to use glue. For example, if it's seed beads and you don't want to pinch down on the seed beads, you know, maybe glue is the thing for that. Um, I need another paintbrush because I have no idea what my, where my other one went. So I'm going to take the belt again. The Lumiere... Um, is quite a bit thicker, as you can see. This is that Jacquard paint. It is, it, the Jacquard is the brand and they make a variety of leather paints, I believe. This particular little package I have is called Lumiere. And I think it's because it's all got some like opalescent kind of metallic stuff. So maybe some of their other Lumiere, maybe some of their other um, uh, formulas are called Lumiere but you want to look for Jack Hard. It is quite a bit thicker, I'm noticing. Um, I So I'm going to try both. I'm going to try like working that into the, um, the tooling. It's a little bit darker. It's an acrylic paint. So in theory, I could just mix this with, um, I could mix this with, um, a, a lighter, I could mix the colors. I can make this a uh, lighter purple if I wanted. I'm going to use, I put a little bit of water on this, on this um, tissue to kind of wipe it off. Yeah. 
um, my thinking was that a lighter purple might show up better against this dark, this dark brown leather. But you can see that would be pretty gorgeous. If I go all the way across there with that, with that purple. Because this one is thicker, I am also was a little curious about um, dry brushing it. It's a little bit too dark of a, um, a little bit too dark of a color to show how that would um, show up. But what I was imagining was just dry brushing it across the high points and avoiding getting it down into the, um, into the, I don't know. Definitely something you could play with. And by dry brushing, I really just mean um, I'm not saturating my paintbrush. I'm kind of just getting it barely any on my paintbrush so that as I lay, as I lay it down onto the leather, it's not uh, going to set, it's not going to like fill up all the crevices. This could be super fun. I don't think this color is the best for this uh, against this very dark leather, but this could be very good. And this is where I get just mesmerized by the painting process and forget all about you guys. Just kidding. Uh, so <laughs> this is the Jacquard um, leather paint. That's got some potential. I wonder if we should try a lighter color. I've got like a whole little array of colors. And one of them is this light, this light gold. And this is, um, as you already know, it's thicker, so I'm really skimping on the shake time here. Okay, but I'm curious about this. I wanna, I wanna try that dry brush with a color that we'll be able to see better. Put it right over where I already put the the um, the paint in the de recessed areas. Well, you guys, you could just go crazy with this. So um, there, that's all I'm going to do, I think, with the Jacquard paint for now. The, the important thing is that we're seeing that it's, um, it is a thicker paint. So you'll, wanna, you'll want to handle it a little bit differently. The, um, the uh, ultimate paint was really, really super good for getting down into the recessed areas. But I'll bet you could, if you're careful and, and work on your technique you could probably get that to do the um just the high areas too so this is gilder's paste um i also used i used gilder's paste on one of the original original ones you guys my work area is getting so cluttered now that i can't find anything so um I used Gilder's paste, and Gilder's paste is uh, very much a paste. It's a it's a craft color. It's kind of similar to um, uh, shoe polish. It smells like shoe polish. Um, it does get hard after a while. So um, what I've got here is a little bit of um, some painting spirits that I'm just going to dab a little bit on here to soften it up. I think you can also use acetone for that. And I've got, so we've been talking about um, repurposing belts, um, tooled leather belts. Um, there's a lot of leather strap already out there in the world. You can find 10 millimeter leather strap. You can find five millimeter leather strap. 
Um, I pulled out some 10 that's got a little bit of a kind of a tooling treatment going on here. Um, if you're looking for strap like this, we have yet another wonderful customer. I should have gotten her on the phone um, to let her know I was going to mention her. But it's her store is called Antelope Beads. I believe this is this will be an accurate link I'm typing in. It's called Antelope Beads. And she her store really focuses on leather, um, leather cords and leather products um, for working with leather cord and strap. So um, she's a great resource for uh, straps like this. I'll bet you probably uh, Joyce and Abby may also carry a variety of leather straps, but um, Antelope Bead, she kind of specializes in it. So you can see here, I'm not using a paintbrush with this because it's a, um, it's a much thicker kind of thing. If you watched our How to Paint on Leather demo um, a while back, I did, I did demo this on metal. Um, I need some more of these mineral spirits. Uh, and it works great on metal too. It is more of a pasty thing. So if you can get it softened up, well, if you buy this, when you buy it and it's new, it's it's quite soft and it's much more like a waxy thing. Uh, when it starts getting old and you got to soften it, um, you know, it's a little more of a challenge, but you can see what I'm doing. I'm just softening it, up, softening it, and I'm trying to get it into the little crevices of, of the leather. Because I'm thinking that this 10, miller, 10 millimeter There we go. Now it's working like I want it to. I'm thinking that this 10 millimeter strap is going to go work great with the smaller um, palace. So I would just continue doing that until I had the length that I want for whatever the bracelet is that I'm making. Um, is that showing up very well? Yeah, it looks, I think it looks, it looks much better in person than it's showing up on camera, guys. But anyway, I'm thinking this is also about a two millimeter thick um, strap. And so I've got one of my... Um, my palace cord ends or crimp ends and it's going to fit on there pretty well it's a little bit uh, the opening is a little bit wider than my material so i very well may go in here with some gel super glue or some e6000 and just put a little bit on the front and back before i put my uh, crimp end on And I don't even have, because this is such a nice fit, I don't even have to trim this one. I'm just going to set it on there. I'm going to make sure it's straight and even and uh, centered. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to come in from the top, the back side, and use my parallel pliers to crimp that down. And that will make a cute little bracelet. So that's the, another option. If you don't want to go shop for a, um, a, a belt, you've got some, um, some other stuff to play with. And one of the other things I'm going to play with, because I, I got excited about um, these um, leather blank leather cuffs are pretty widely available out there or at least they used to be I have a whole bunch of them I have so many that I have not shopped for them in a long time but you should be able to just search um, blank leather cuffs and be able to find um, a variety so some of them are thinner than others so I'm going to choose a slightly thicker one 
And I thought it might be fun to throw some paint colors in here and just try. Um, um, I'm going to go ahead and trim the stamps off and just try like sponge painting on here. This, this work surface, guys, getting so cluttered. Uh, sorry, somebody's asking if there's a kit. No, this is not a kit. It's an inspiration project from our website. Um, really just a demo of uh, having some fun painting on leather and then using them with our new scroll work crimp ends. So um, using some different um, paint products and using some different, I'm totally, no, I better not estimate. I better actually be specific. I think with this one, guys, I'm not actually sure if we'll get, get to it. Oops, I got a little bit of purple on here. So I guess I'm going to have to use purple in this project. I don't know if we'll actually get to um, that part of the demo, but I'm going to go ahead and cut this one a little shorter because I'm going to use the button and the button loop toggle. And I think that one takes up a little more space. If you guys make this, you really want to pay attention to, you want to really get a good estimate of how long your toggle is going to be so that you can, um, so that you can uh, accurately cut the length of your leather. So I think I'm going to use, I got a little bit of green that I think will play nice with the purple and I'm just going to sponge paint. It's going to be a little bit of a crazy color combo, but let's try it anyway. huh? And I got this little sponge right here. Maybe I'll start with the gold. And again, I, um, I cleaned all these leather pieces that I was going to use with a little bit of alcohol before, um, we started the demo today so that um, they'd be clean and I hadn't, wouldn't have to worry about the paint adhering to it. So this is acrylic paint. In a perfect world, I would let this dry um, pretty thoroughly. It dries fast anyway since it's acrylic, but because I need to move right on and add a second um, layer, I'm just going to kind of go right over it. Uh, Lynn is asking about stamping the leather cuffs. Um, Lynn, that's a brilliant idea. Um, I didn't even think of that, but I don't see why not. Um, I've never, I've not done it. I suppose that the, um, the firmness of the leather would really um, be a factor in how well your stamping worked. But, um, but um, I would definitely try that. I'm sorry I didn't think of it beforehand, but then this demo's already going to get a little bit over our allotted time. But I don't know if I'd have been able to squeeze that in. Um, Emily's asking, what kind of alcohol, uh, isopropyl or denatured? It's it's um, isopropyl, Emily. And then a little bit of green. I like this. This is looking cute. And that's where I'm going to stop so we have time to um, to do the rest of it. So this is a wide cuff, so I'm going to go with that um, with that wide, wide the widest um, crimp end again, just because it's kind of a wide one. And maybe I'll use the copper ones, but I'll put the um, the and the incised side to the outside because that's kind of interesting is that the best choice for this guy should i use the silver instead mary saying could you use an old tool belt that is exactly what these original ones were made from as we um repurposed an old tooled belt all right 
I'm going to use the copper. I'm sticking with that. I wanted to really quickly um, uh, get this last end on so that I could, um, that's just silly. Don't make my Sharpie mark on the front side. Um, so that I could show you guys, demo that little leather. Um, I'm also estimating, I'm not using my ruler. Um, I wanted to demo the little, um, the little button loop that I created for this one. I wanted to have time to do that. So I'm just gonna get this crimp end on here and then um, demo that in case you guys decide that the button and the crimp end is a good way to finish yours. And did you see what I just did? I don't trust my, I'm moving fast and I don't really trust my measuring right now. So I stole that first corner and I'm lining it up on the other corner so that I'll know they match. All right. Squeeze this on. This leather's not quite as thick as the, um, as the belt we used, but I still think that it'll be okay with uh, with just crimping. I just need to test it, you know, I, I need to crimp it and then I need to test it and continue crimping. And also as I'm doing this, I'm making sure, keeping an eye on the placement, making sure this stays centered and doesn't get shifted around. It's hard for me. I love the front side of this um, this piece so much that it's hard to use the back side, but it's very pretty, so I shouldn't ignore it. So there we go. That ending is on there. Uh, to make a little um, a little um, what are we calling it? A belt loop. It's a belt loop. <laughs> It would have come. It would have come to me eventually. Um, the instructions for that. There's little diagrams on the um, on the um, downloadable project sheet. Um, and I'm going to need an all. So what I want here is just a small piece, about two and a quarter inches long. Worked well for. Um, as a but as a button loop for that longhorn button that I used in the um, in this version. So two and a quarters of inches of um, of some. It's like just a suede. It's a little piece of suede, and I'm going to want a jump ring. This is one of our larger oval jump rings, and I'm going to want about three or four inches of, of 24 gauge craft wire. And I think I'm going to definitely go with slightly longer because then I won't cut myself short. I kind of like a messy wrap that has a lot of, uh, a lot of wire on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is put this jump ring on the cord end, on the crimp end. And then I've got my wire and I've got my little piece of suede lace. What I want to do with the suede lace is punch a little hole. This needs to be a straight end. I'm going to punch a little hole using my um, awl, about an eighth of an inch. Um, from the end, from each end of that uh, piece of lace. You could use, also use a pushpin if you don't have a, an awl. Oh, thanks, I'm fine, I'm, <laughs> I didn't see the comments about the metal choice, but I am seeing now that there is a, 
uh, preference for copper, which I ended up using. I asked, but then I just moved moved forward without waiting for an answer. All right, so I've got a little piece of suede lace. I've got uh, this piece of wire looks like it's about five inches long. And I'm gonna take a round nose um, plier and just make a loop. I wonder if I use, this 24 feels quite fine. I'm wondering if I used, I use 22, I use 22 gauge in the um, in the original, but that's okay. So I've got a little bend in my wire at the center that I just I put my round nose pliers in there and just gave it a little bend. And then I'm gonna about an eighth of an inch down from the that bend, I'm just gonna fold one of those wires over, like so. So it's almost like I've got. Actually, let me, let me use some pliers in there so it has a little bit more of a bend. It's almost like a P is what I was, where I was going with that. Got a little bit of a P shape. And then I'm going to fold this piece of um, suede lace uh, in half. And I need to thread one end of this, I need to find those holes I made. And I need to thread both of those ends onto this wire. It's not easy to see those uh, those little holes once you've made them. So make them as big as you can with your push pin or your awl. So that they're, or maybe even put a mark on there with the, um, with a Sharpie so that you can see that, see that better. All right, so the whole point being, I wanna thread both of those holes onto this wire and into that loop. I wanna move the ends of that um, into this loop. Oh, you know what? I forgot that this needs to be, it needs to be on the bent side. So let me just move those around. I want it to be so that it's in line with that loop that I made. So the, the tips of the um, the tips of the leather suede lace are just kind of at the bottom of that that loop that I made. And I want the wires to kind of frame it. Does that make sense? So the loop is an extension of um, of the uh, suede lace. And then I'm gonna take that part, that one that's folded and I'm just gonna start wrapping. And I'm gonna wrap it tight because I need it to hold well. I'm gonna wrap that all the way down and then I'm gonna take the other one and come around and wrap that. And so here's where you would, um, if you wanted a, a lot of wire and a real messy wrap, you would definitely go with a longer piece, a longer piece of wire and um, <clears throat> so that you could get a real good messy wrap. And then you wanna somehow tuck your ends down underneath the wrap if you can, so that you don't have pokies. and just pinch them down into the suede lace a little bit. If I wasn't rushing, I would do a better job of that, but here we go. All right, so then the last step is just to take that jump ring, open it, I'm on the wrong side, and attach your attach it to the jump ring at the loop. So there's a good diagram on the downloadable project sheet that you guys can find that up in the, um, the link up in the description of the video. And also it's up in the comments near the top, um, but that's your button loop. 22 gauge is wire. I, I had 24, uh, 22 gauge is better. I had 24 handy and that's as far as I got. Um, so then the next step, and I don't happen to have a copper button handy because I was out in my drawers, but your next step would then to put to, would be to put 
a button at the other end of the bracelet. And I used three, I used three jump rings to attach that. And that's all in the, uh, in the downloadable project sheet. All of those details um, are there. So that's my, my painting on leather and using them with our crimp ends demo. Um, <laughs> it's so messy, you guys. My workbench is just like, ah. But, um, you know, this has a lot of potential for using with our crimp ends. Here's the first one we made. If you came in late, these were the original two that um, are on the, but that are pictured in the inspiration section. Um, and then we did a second one here using Ultimate Paint as our highlight paint. And then we also played with some Gilder's paste and we used some um, Jack Hard leather paint just to, to sponge paint. It was a lot of fun, you guys. Um, it's messy in here, but you know what? Um, I always say it's a messy good time. So um, I did want to bring out um, some of the other jewelry ideas that we've done with our crimp ends. So these are all on the website to, to um, look at. These ones here are called the Marrakesh. Those were one of the first ones we launched. This one is uh, called the Crescent, was in the first group. And this is a loomed bracelet. So there is some glass seed beads. And um, there's mostly, I think the way I finished the loom is it's mostly leather up inside the crimp end. But you really wanna be careful using glass beads you don't want to put glass beads in there and then crimp it down. You want to you want to squeeze your crimp end to fit your piece and then mostly use glues. You want you want it to be tightened enough where you'll still be able to get your beads in there, but it's going to fit well. And then you're definitely going to want to use glue instead of crimping to hold something with seed beads like this. And then there's just a whole bunch of other stuff that is fun to do with those crimp ends. Um, all on the website. So you guys are going to need to just go and look um, and look there and see what you can find if you're interested in doing in doing uh, these kind of projects. So that was a messy good time, you guys. Thank you for joining me. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and um, minimize this one. Whoops. That's not what I meant to do. I meant to do this. Um, that was fun. My hands are messy. I'm wearing a, an apron, so, and there is a little bit of paint on the apron, so it's a good thing I was wearing it. And um, and thank you. I, uh, I enjoyed this. I always enjoy it when I get out paints and um, crafty stuff. So thank you guys for joining me. And um, as always, if you guys make um, projects um, after we've done a demo, please share them with us. Um, put them on our Facebook page um, or, or post them and tag me or tag TRCast. And because um, we love to see what you guys do. It's really fun. Um, and thank you all for joining me. And uh, I'll figure out what's going to happen next week um, and watch for that info on Saturday. Usually I, I schedule that um, to be announced on Saturdays. And um, be well. And I hope everyone uh, has time to make great stuff this week. And I'll see you next week. Bye.